Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 17th episode of The OC Show. Next to me is Tim. My name's Peter. And first things first, on Sunday or Monday, depending on the time zone, there's going to be a live Q&A. Exactly. So it would be on September 6th, and it will be actually on Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern time, or like you said, Monday at 3 a.m. for the guys in Europe and something like 9 a.m. over here in Taipei. We'll be uh, taking your questions on the topics of today's episode and probably adding a few crispy debates into it as well. Okay, is there already some news on the guests for next Monday or is this still a secret? So Truthman should be back. Oh. So, and uh, Neo will be here as well. Uh, and then after that, I'm not too sure yet who is going to join. So if you guys actually would like to join to talk about something going on around you, you know, as an event or something like that, you're always welcome to, to apply. Just All shoot right. us a message. Very cool. So uh, as every two weeks, let's start off with the competitions, the Rookie Rumbles. Yeah, so Rookie Rumble ended this weekend and it was quite an intense competition, especially between Romania and France. Uh, uh, so Gianna OC, which we're not sure if it's a girl or a guy, um, we'll see, uh, ended up with 150 points, uh, which um, he or her took last uh, last week, actually already in the last OC show we mentioned it. So passing Zikin from France, which has 96 points, and then we had OGMC uh, Ville TC from the US with 96 points. And actually what we should mention is that Gianna OC, she or he, um, <laughs> this is very not practical, um, Ended up with 150 points, which means he has the best scores in every single stage of the competition. I think we've seen that once before with, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but it might be NVIDIA Forever 2, who won yep. the third or the fourth Rookie Rumble, got 150 points as True well. That. And we know how well NVIDIA Forever 2 is doing right now in the ranking, so that's, that's very promising. Yeah, it should be quite interesting to see the Romanian scene evolve from, from that point onwards. Speaking of French overclockers, the Novice Nimble is still ongoing. There is uh, about 19 days left, so that's a little bit less than uh, than three weeks. Leading currently is uh, is Kalkotland, who's been leading the Novice Nimble for the past three rounds and is on its way to possibly win another another round, the fourth edition of the Novice Nimble. In second place, we find HardwoodLux.de. That's a team of, uh, of Dan Cup, and it's the first time that we see the German team so high up in the novice True, nimble yeah. uh, third in that ranking uh, ranking is tech lab terabyte team from uh, from uh, brazil, brazil yeah. under the lead of uh, of ronaldo so that's pretty interesting to see two new teams moving up uh, yeah, calcutland yeah. is still is still up there though still up there i would not be french i would say we have to do something about yeah. it <laughs> i'm not gonna say that <laughs> talking about teams actually um, Things have changed as well for the old school is best school. It seems that uh, classic platforms retrieved a little bit from the competition, maybe due to the team cup. I'm not sure. Um, so leading the old school is best school right now. So the number four, which ended also this weekend, if I'm correct. Uh, Belarus OC team uh, leading with 40 points. Extreme Overdrive OC uh, team Italy from Italy with 39 points. And here classic platform on the third position with 33 points. No, nonetheless, the old school is best school number five on uh, based on Socket 3 and Voodoo graphics card is still running. So you actually still has nearly a, like a good month to, to continue on that uh, one. You mentioned it already. Classic Platforms is doing extremely well in the Team Cup, which might be you know taking a little bit of their attention from the old school is best school round four. In the Team Cup, which is, uh, which is still open for about a month, um, for those who are participating, take note of the different, the different uh, ending of the different stages. There's a, it's a whole complex oh, yeah. system. You know, they all, they all uh, end on a different date and a different hour. Anyway, ClassicPlatforms.com is currently leading in the Team Cup, uh, followed by Overclockers.com. Both the teams mm -hmm. are from the USA, so I guess they're trying to find out who's the best American overclocking team. And in third place, we find Overclock.net, which is also from North America, but primarily Canada. Yeah, so it's going to be a tough battle, I think, between those teams. Um, no other competition that ended actually this weekend, this was this time a sponsored competition by Gigabyte, so by the Z97 last hooray, hooray, right? And um, so here we have, uh, we had two categories. We had the ambient one, the extreme one. Note that the scores we are going to tell you now have not yet been validated, so, you know, it might change if there's some issues with the submissions of some of the guys. So currently leading the ambient one, we have uh, Ar Arham from Indonesia with 73 points. Cold is from Indonesia as well with 63 points. And we have FGI from uh, Bulgaria with uh, 53 points. On the extreme side, we had a quite interesting battle during the weekend uh, the, between Extreme Addicts from Poland, which uh, right now currently is winning with 79 points. And Lucky Noob from Indonesia with 63 points, who was benching full out last minute until 2 a.m. or something like that. So 
well, well done in the battle. It was not enough, but still very interesting to, to watch. And then we have uh, Ralph from Sweden with uh, 59 points. So. Ralph actually won a previous MSI competition uh, earlier this year as well. So he seems to be starting to step up his game. And you know, he's from Sweden, and we know that all the legendary, well, a lot of legendary overclockers come from Sweden. So True. he might be someone to, 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 to look watch, at. Yeah. Um, other competitions currently ongoing, which are sponsored, uh, the MSI Godlike OC tournament. So the 2D battle closed a while ago. Now yep. we're in the 3D battles with the 3D ambient competition and the 3D extreme competition. The 3D ambient competition is with uh, integrated graphics cards, whereas the 3D extreme competition is with the GTX 960. Competition just started, so there's still a, there's still a lot of uh, a lot of uh, room for improvement for yeah. everyone involved. In the ambient categories, we see that Rolls from uh, Rolls zero zero nine from Peru is currently leading, and in the three D extreme category, we see Pericha Barry from Montenegro currently uh, currently in the lead. Yeah, oh, yeah, it would be interesting to see how this competition evolves. Like you say, it's still plenty of time. So. Yeah. Moving on from the competitions to real world overclocking, I've, I, I heard that you wanted to say something about what's going on at PAX. Yeah, so this weekend there was a PAX Prime in the US and um, there was some actually some overclocking there, which is quite cool. Uh, this time it was on the CUDA Master booth. Uh, CUDA Master, you know, that is uh, completely into the, the, the maker thing right now. And so the, they were, of course, promoting their new cases, but part of their promotion of you know the DIY segment pretty much of the OC of the PC business uh, they had some overclocking there with Travis uh, which nickname are they should I about is I think it's V2 V3 yeah so he was doing their extreme overclocking we are not too sure exactly what he was benching I haven't seen submissions yet so but I feared from the pictures we've saw that there were some interesting scores so we're gonna have to keep an eye out on that to see what's going on there but nonetheless very cool yeah, very cool. Yeah, it was a lot of new things are happening at the end of the the summer, at least in the yeah. northern northern uh, hemisphere. We see that, uh, or we saw that Stepanzi and Dinos Twenty Two were both experimenting with uh, online both streams. Both the opposite of the planet, pretty much. Yeah, so there is uh, <laughs> there is literally no no connection we can draw between those two. Anyway, Stepanzi was trying to uh, hit for the global first place in Firestruck Extreme. It is a uh, GTX 980 Ti graphics card, a Kingpin edition, which mm -hmm. uh, he actually succeeded. I'm yep, not true, sure if yeah. he's recorded live or he was recording and then the recording He was stopped. trying to attend during the live and yeah. he has he had some issues with the capture card, which is still kind of a sensitive topic among the OC streaming world. So. Yeah. And Dinos22 was trying out both Twitch and, uh, and YouTube gaming, which launched last weekend. He found out YouTube gaming was more practical for his purposes yeah. and he promised to do more streams as well. I think the first stream he actually did was introducing how to do Sub-Zero uh, memory overclocking yeah. on the X99 platform. We yeah. made a little uh, note of it on our front page as well on it. Yeah. Blood, so. That's very cool. Yeah. And it's actually, I like the fact that they both had two different approaches, right? One was more educative, trying to teach you something. So that was Dino, which I think is great because as a rep of a, a company, that's more like the role we would await from him. And then we had uh, Steponzi, which like elite overclocker, which was more into the, okay, let's attempt a record or something, which is great to have a live footage from. So. The, the most entertaining part about, about Stepanzi's uh, stream was in fact the, the, the Twitch chat. Was a yeah. lot of people chiming in and giving opinions and giving uh, just yeah, basically yeah, yeah, talking true. about over the, the chats is a big part of those streams. The, the live the, this was stream and then before we had it online, but live there is also something coming up in Indonesia. Two things, in fact, yeah. there is a two live competitions. The first competition that we want to talk about is the Elin's Foria competition, Elinsforia, which is the yes. probably the world's only AMD overclocking competition. I think I haven't heard of any other ones. I think that's the only one for the year. Yeah, it's uh, it's held <laughs> in Yogyakarta. I think it's the next weekend in September or yeah, uh, five, six, uh, five and six. Yes. Yeah, that is next weekend. So you'll maybe hear something about it during the OC show. We'll see. Yeah, if we get enough pictures to share or even maybe some video, we'll see what we can show you guys. So essentially, it's AMD overclocking. There was already a competition at Elinsporia with AMD last year as well. So this is, I think, the second or maybe even the third edition. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it's cool stuff. And there's some good price in cash to win. So like 32 million rupiah. <laughs> So Still 2.2k. <laughs> it's not bad for AMD competition. Yeah. Think about it, right? It's when not I was that bad. when I was when I saw the <laughs> poster online, it said 32 million. I was like, oh, I need to sign up. But then it was 2.2k, which is still actually pretty fine for an overclocking competition. Yeah. It's awesome. 
Yeah, well, other other clocking competition that is coming up in Indonesia, that's the AOCT, which we don't actually have that much detail on the competition yet to share in terms of, you know, the structure, because every year they have this this whole uh, qualifiers around the country and the final is also in York, Jakarta, but on a different trade show. And last year they had a hundred overclockers at the finals uh, to watch the competition, but also to participate. So this year they're going to do it on Skylake, which is going to be very interesting. The first competition this year actually with Skylake, so it's going to be cool to see what they come up with, uh, who is sponsoring this, and you know what are the new overclockers coming up. I saw some motherboards of MSI and, uh, and yep. Gigabyte already being used for the binning. True, uh, yeah. Lucky Noob also shared his binning uh, data from the 10 CPUs. Yeah, like had. a binning log kind of thing, yeah. yeah. Might be interesting to check that out as well if you are looking into you know buying Skylake or overclocking Skylake or binning Skylake. For well, it's always good as a reference of starting point if you start benching to know you know what to expect. For sure, yeah. All right. That was the end, I think. Yeah, there's a, just a quick notice, and oh. uh, yeah, uh, we actually uh, were talking this morning a little bit with Pepino from MSI, just oh, quickly right. catching on the latest news, you know, and um, so um, there was a few uh, articles during the weekend about the MSI Lightning 980 Ti. Right now, we don't have that much information on it, besides the fact that finally it seems to be coming after because it's been announced since Computex already, like a few teasers here and there. So finally, reviews are here, and apparently next week we should have it in the shops or something. It's going to be a little bit pricey for sure, but it's going to be interesting to see. That's why you pay for the top-end card. So the card will be competing with directly with the EVJ yes. Kingpin Edition card, the Asus Strix, because we actually haven't heard anything about the Matrix yet, No. and the Galax Hall of Fame. I saw um, Ian's 8-pack yes. was uh, pushing the Strix card already pretty hard. There is a uh, some action from Team AU going on as well with the Galax uh, Hall of Fame, and then Extrematic Stiponzi and Kingpin yeah. himself have already, they're basically dominating the top three in the Firestruck Extreme single GPU category. True, so yeah. this is gearing up to be a pretty, pretty it's intense the fight battle. at the top, eh? yeah. it's going to be who got the best custom card out there. So it's going to be interesting to watch. Watch out, guys. If you look at the scores, always check you know what kind of power design is used as well. It's always a good reference to really understand what the cards are capable of. So. All right. I think that's about it for today's episode. Don't forget, there's the live Q&A. So if you want to chat a little bit more, maybe chat about those cards. We'll see who we can get as guests as well. So if you have any suggestions or questions, just come uh, next week on the chat. And you can always drop a comment in the video as well if you have quick questions. So until next time. Yep. See you around. Keep pushing it. Oh, right. We also have the overclocking focus interviews with APAC and Dinos22. If you want to know how they feel and think about overclocking, check them out here, somewhere around here. Bye.